Hello everyone. In today's film, I would like to create a look that is a simple polishing of the features, a refining of the features, but at the same time, I don't want to give it too much structure. I just want to see how I feel as I go along. Work from start to finish today. I have some products here that are new that I'd like to try out. I also have some products that have been in my kit for quite some time, but I haven't necessarily utilized them all that often within my films. So for some of my regular viewers, I'm sure these will seem like new products. I have been so excited to sit down and create a tutorial of sorts. I had planned to film this film a lot sooner, but about two months ago, I was all ready to begin filming. Everything was in order. And then, out of nowhere, a giant cold sore appears at the left peripheral of my lips. You may be able to see just a little bit of redness still there. It's left a little bit of a scar. So I was completely besieged by this gigantic cold sore at the left corner of my lips. It took forever to heal. And at one point, I started to think, my life is over. But then within a week it was healed. But then the biggest, the most hideous cold sore I have ever seen appeared right in the middle of my upper lip. You might actually be able to still see a tiny little scar. It's left a very small maroon scar. By that point I was not amused. I came this close to summoning the Kraken. But I thought I would have a chat with myself and I'm very soothing so I was able to calm myself down. Fortunately my cold sores have healed and are gone. For now, touch wood, Georgian mahogany, Cuban of course. So as of late, my own skin has been quite dry and quite inflamed in certain areas. Around my chin area has been quite inflamed as well as around the temples. So my U zone has been quite inflamed as of late. I'm going to be going in and applying product to clean shaven skin. Most of my facial hair has been removed by means of laser. There is still a little bit of hair that grows. I like to remove that with a razor, but I do not react very well to razors. It doesn't matter what part of the body it is. My eyebrows seem to be fine, but everywhere else seems to react quite badly to a razor. My skin gets very inflamed. The skin around my jaw on my chin is actually very aggravated and inflamed at the moment. You may not be able to see how red I look because of the lighting within my studio, but I'm currently looking as red as a rare saline steak. So to soothe my inflammation, I'm going to be going in with a product that I use after shaving, especially if I'm going to apply makeup on my skin after shaving. This product is fantastic at just reducing the inflammation. I'm going to be using the Banish Fighter Gel, and I have found this to be a fantastic product just for reducing any inflammation on the skin, as well as being applied to areas as a preventative for spots. I tend to get lots of little pustules forming after I have shaved, maybe a day after I have shaved the skin on my chin. But by using the Phytogel, I have found that it reduces the amount of spots that I get on my chin area after shaving. I actually have a review of this product coming very soon. Because this product is a gel, you don't really need all that much of it, and I'm just applying it to a few areas where I have spots and inflammation, just to really calm my skin down. And I'm not a planet everywhere, I'm only a planet to the regions where I have inflammation currently, and to the areas that I want to prevent from getting irritated or inflamed. I'm going to give the skin just a couple of minutes for that product to be really absorbed into the skin and for it to dry down. So with the Phytogel applied and dried down, it has just reduced the inflammation in my chin area and to the areas where I applied it. It's got quite a cooling effect. When my skin is a little inflamed or very dry, I prefer to go in and layer products. Rather than going in with one moisturizer, I find that by layering numerous products on top of skin that is inflamed or a little bit dry, it creates a barrier between the skin and whatever cosmetics, makeup products that you go in with. It's also a good way of providing the skin with numerous things that it might need whilst having makeup on on top of it. So the skin will be repairing and in a way you have cocooned it. So by applying products in this fashion, it can protect the skin, but also gives the skin what it needs to repair. Now I'm going to go in and apply moisturizer to all of my skin. For moisturizer, I'm going to be going in and applying some of the Banish Vitamin C Cream and I'm applying a liberal amount of that product to the skin. Now, it may seem as if though I applied quite a lot of it. Because my skin is quite dry at the moment, it will absorb this product quite quickly. Always remembering to work in towards the eyes, never out the way. 
Now I did apply quite a liberal amount of this moisturizer, a good hedonistic layer. I thought I applied maybe too much moisturizer, but just by feeling the skin, my skin has began already absorbing that product. So it just goes to show how dry my skin is at the moment. The vitamin C cream is a marvelous way at adding moisture and nourishment to the skin, but in a way that's more subtle. It's a much more softer product. It doesn't really give me any irritation or inflammation. It does to the skin what a cold glass of fresh orange juice does when you are really thirsty. It just nourishes and replenishes my skin. When I'm talking, my skin doesn't have that tight dryness. It's still there, but it's reduced. With the skincare applied, I'm now going to go in and start priming the skin. To begin priming, I'm going to be taking some of the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. And I've just dotted that across my face. And then I'm going to go in and disperse and distribute the product all over the skin and really work it into the skin. One way of getting product to sit, especially if you have layered it on top of other products, is to massage it into the skin. But then if you feel like you're getting swirls, pat it into the skin. So the massaging moves it all around and then the patting just puts it into position. Also, when you have irritation and inflamed skin, one may be inclined to just leave the skin alone. That can work, and sometimes you do just need to leave the skin alone. But sometimes when you go in with products that are quite soothing to the skin, when you softly massage them into the skin, it can actually reduce inflammation and irritation a little bit. And I'm just applying a little bit more of that product to the areas that I have the most texture in. Never forget the neck. To prime the skin further, I'm going to be taking some of Chanel's La Blanc. And I'm not going to apply all that much of this product. I'm just massaging it into the skin. And this product will give us a little bit of luminescence. La Blanc is meant to have a lightening effect. I don't think you will really notice that much of a lightening effect on me. But if you were to apply this product to a deeper skin tone, then yes, you shall see that it does have a lightening effect. I like to use Le Blanc as a priming product. I would say as well that if you are to use it as a priming product, certainly if you have a deeper skin tone, even if your skin isn't all that dark and you may have a skin that's more lighter, you will notice that the Le Blanc has a slight white pigment in it. And of course, it's much more noticeable when you apply it to deeper skin tones. It's fine as a priming product and I would use it underneath foundation. If you're going over with foundation, it's fine, but it can look like a white cast on the skin if it is applied to skin tones that are darker than my own. I just popped out for a short stroll as well as a bite to eat as I was feeling rather ravenous. And it's a lovely, crisp, clean, calm winter's day outside. When I returned, I discovered that my studio is far colder than it is outside. So I've decided to leave my shawl on until I temperature adjust. Now, before I go in and apply any color corrector or foundation or any makeup, I'm going to go in and apply some of the Elizabeth Arden eight hour cream to the lips. You may be able to see that my lips are a little bit gray or purple looking. That is because I bruised them. I exfoliated them a little bit too hard the other day and they have bruised just ever so slightly. Now I'm going to go onto the lips with some of the Elizabeth Arden eight hour cream using a Q-tip or a cotton bud. I tend to call it a cotton bud, but I know that some people like to call them Q-tips. My lips are very dry at the moment. And one way to exfoliate lips or to get dead skin off the lips and to nourish the lips at the same time, but not aggravate them, is to apply a cream like eight hour cream and really press and roll it into the lips, being quite gentle. And by pressing and rolling, it just clears any of the dead skin off the lips. Then I'm applying a fresh layer. Now I'm going to leave the eight hour cream on the lips just as a conditioner whilst I go in and apply other products to the rest of the face. But by leaving it there, it will just condition the lips. That way they will be nice and smooth for lip liner or lipstick at a later point. Now I'm going to go in and apply some color corrector. And to color correct, I'm using some of the Cryolans Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D1W which is this shade right here, taking it from my custom palette. I'm going in and just covering the areas that are a little bit blue under the eyes. And I'm applying that product using an Anastasia Beverly Hills A4 brush. I'm not applying the color corrector in any particularly neat fashion. I am covering the areas that have discoloration and the areas that I want to brighten before going in with foundation. And I'm applying a little bit of that to the chin as I always get paranoid that I'm going to get 
Five o'clock shadow. I get nightmares about having five o'clock shadow. Croc footwear also give me nightmares. Now that is the product applied. I am just going to let it sit there just for a moment. I'm also going to apply just a little bit of that through the brow area and a tiny little bit of it down the nose just to reduce any redness. And I'm just concealing our uninvited guests. So I have given the concealer just a few moments just to settle into the skin and also to warm up on the skin. That way is a little bit easier to maneuver as these Dermacolor Cream Concealers are a much more solid formulation. Now to buff the concealer through and stipple it into place, I'm going to be using a Zova Synthetic 227 brush, just blurring the edges with small pressure, little strokes and then stippling. That way you leave as much of the product on as possible rather than just blending it, which would move it all around everywhere. By just stippling it into place, it's correcting the way that it sits on the skin. Of course, remembering to be delicate around the eye area. It's almost like patting it into place with a finger, although I can't say I enjoy a finger. Now you may find that the concealer or the color corrector settles into the finer lines underneath your eyes. It does on me. There is a way to correct that, but not at this point. We will disguise the finer lines after we've applied foundation. Now to blend the product around the mouth, I am not going to use my Zova Synthetic 227 brush. To expedite the blending process, I am going to go in with an Anastasia A30 brush. And this is just a big synthetic blending brush. It's great for just stippling. By stippling the product, pressing in, pressing in, pressing in, lightly, but with moderate pressure, you aren't actually removing all that much product from the skin. What you are doing is simply correcting the way that the product sits on the skin. Now for foundation, I am going to be going in with a foundation today that very recently launched, but I'm not going to say which foundation it is. Some of you might be able to guess what foundation it is. In fact, I challenge you to guess what foundation it is. I'm not going to say which foundation it is because I plan to investigate this foundation at a later point, but I wanted to try out the foundation today. I wouldn't be trying the lightest shade from the foundation range. I should be trying the second lightest shade. I think this shade might be a little bit too dark for my skin, it's just a little bit on the darker side, but it will work. And I'm just applying the Phantom foundation on a Space NK foundation brush. I'm applying quite a good layer of it, being more gentle going over the areas where I have applied the color corrector. And I'm just using my classic application technique of applying foundation slap it on and hope for the best. With the foundation applied, I'm now going to go back in with our Anastasia Beverly Hills A30 brush, and I'm just stippling that foundation. This is the first time that I've ever used this foundation, so I am excited to see the outcome. So that is the foundation applied. I applied a good medium coverage coat of this foundation. I found with this foundation as well, it's quite self-setting. It doesn't really look like it needs a lot of powder, but it's got this lovely sheen to it. It's got this lovely sheen. I just went on a voyage to the Necessarium and I looked at the lighting there, which is quite harsh. This shade is just a little bit too dark for my skin tone. So I think I'll be going for the lighter shade next time. For additional coverage, I'm going to be going in with the Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D707 and I'm applying that concealer just to areas that I feel need a little bit more coverage. Then I'm just stippling all of that product into place using a clean Zuva Synthetic 227 brush. This D707 shade is lighter than the D1W. It is also lighter than the foundation that I used, but by blending it into place, you are able to diffuse any visible coloration markation, and of course ensure seamlessness. At this point in the makeup, I am thinking, hmm, I don't know if I'll really go for a strong eye. I'm thinking maybe I'll try something more soft and more natural and more easy. That's really what I wanted to experience in today's film. I wanted to create something where I don't necessarily know what I'm creating at the beginning, something that I make up as I go along in a way. One method of diffusing the coloration of foundations, creams, 
concealers, whatever cream product or liquid product that you're using, is to very, very lightly take your brush and just almost skim it across the area. And you can do this barely touching the skin. And what this does, it creates a really blurred edge of color. So you won't really notice that there are actually two tones there. You may notice that in one area it is a different color to the other area, but your eye will not be able to see where the colors begin to change. It becomes really seamless. And you can always go back in with your concealer brush and some concealer and pat on, just patting on and blur, just touching it up. So that is all of the base product applied. I have applied color corrector, I have applied foundation, and I have applied concealer. Now I'm going to go in and set all of that product through using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Loose Setting Powder in the shade Translucent. But before we go through and set everything with loose powder, I am going to go in and correct the accumulation of product in the fine lines. You may have found at this point that you have product accumulating in your finer lines underneath the eyes. There is a way around this. Take any blending brush of your choice. I'm going to go back in with our Zoba Synthetic 227 brush that I used before. And what I'm going to do is just quickly, really gently blur over the fine lines. So where the product has accumulated in your finer lines, you are redistributing it around the area again so that it's not so set in the finer lines. Now I'm going to go in with our loose powder on a Kitstars N30 small tapered blender brush. Less is more when it comes to powdering underneath the eyes as it can be such a dry area. It's one of my driest areas. In fact, I'm surprised I haven't gone on fire. And just by going in and pressing with the brush, underneath the eye. What this does, it locks the product in place with the powder. It sets the product in place. So it will take a lot longer, if at all, for your cream products or for your liquid products to accumulate in your finer lines because they have been set, they have been locked in place. And now I am setting the rest of the face using a Wayne Goss number no. two brush. And I'm just pressing that powder on. Now, if you feel as if you have applied too much powder, you can always go in with a big fluffy powder brush. This is the Stelazzi powder brush, and you can just go over the skin really lightly. Do make sure it's a very floppy powder brush, not a big dense one, as you may disturb the formation of the foundation for which you have just applied and set with the powder. Moving on to eyebrows. I'm first of all going to go in with a good old faithful of mine. For my regular viewers, I'm sure you have seen this many, many a time. And this is MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Omega. I will firstly go in and just draw out a very faint light shape for the eyebrows. I did, of course, earlier go through the brow region with some loose powder to make sure that that whole area was dry and set, but going through a second time shan't do you any harm. And I'm just beginning to draw out a very faint eyebrow shape using that Omega color on an Anastasia Beverly Hills 7B brush. And with the shape of the eyebrows now sketched in, I'm going to go in and draw individual little hairs. And to do so, I'm going to be taking some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Concrete. And I'm applying that to the eyebrows using an Anastasia number no. 12 brush. And I'm just sketching in little hairs, little strokes to create the illusion of natural hairs. I've been using the angle brush like this, taking it like that the intuitive way to use the angle brush. If you want to create the illusion of hairs, take the angle brush on its end so that the tallest point of the brush is hitting the face first, not the shortest. And you take the taller point and you just flick upwards. And that creates the illusion of little hairs. I'm going to go back in with our Elizabeth Arden eight hour cream. As my lips feel as if though they are 80 grit sandpaper. They probably look it too. Now for eyes. I'm going to be going in with a cream eyeshadow today. But first of all, I want to remove any loose powder or potential oil from the eyelids. And to do that, I'm just using a Clinique eyeshader brush. And I'm just wiping over the eyelid just to remove any concealer or powder or foundation that got on the eyelids. Now I'm going to go in with this Bobbi Brown Longwear Cream Shadow in the shade Bone. 
And I'm just going to apply that to the eyelids using a Charles Fox 8146405 brush. Then just buffing and blending the edges and smoothing over the product with this Real Techniques domed shadow brush. And I'm going to go into the socket with that bone color. This is a color that is quite close to my natural skin tone. And that's what I was wanting to do. I wanted to blank out the eyelids so that the coloration is all one tone. And while I wait for the cream eyeshadow to dry, I shall be taking the Hendash Cosmetics Butopsy palette and taking a little bit of wet plus paint. And I'm taking some of that wet color, which is a pale cream shade. And I'm applying it to the lower lash line using a Kidstars N33 micro pencil brush. Now it may seem slightly daft that I'm going in with eyeshadows that more or less match my skin tone and you can't see them. Ah, an eyeshadow that is the same color as your own skin tone, whatever your skin tone might be. If you blank over the area, first of all, I just find that it provides a wonderful base for going in with gradually darker tones. That way you create a really seamless blend. And going over the eyelids and into the socket with our Clinique eyeshadow brush using some of that wet color again. Now I'm going to be taking some of the color tan plus lines and dipping more into the tan side. And I'm just lining the lower lash line Applying it with the Kidstars S41 Short Angle Brush. And I don't want to apply any more than that to the lower lash line. And as you can see, that has provided us with just a subtle amount of definition on the lower lash lines. On the same Kidstars S41 Short Angle Brush, I'm going to go back into the Butopsy palette and take some of the color tan and take it just a little bit more towards lines. So it's a little lighter. I'm just using a Q-tip to hold back my eyelid. And I'm just really softly lining the upper lash line. I will line the whole upper lash line, but I want to concentrate the color at the outer corner. And I'm going to go back in with our Kidstars N33 micro pencil brush from before and just soften what I have applied. And going back into the Hendash Butopsy palette, I'm going to be taking the color Feel Plus Real. The great thing about this palette is you can mix up your own color, but I'm going to take from in between feel plus real. I want to have a, a darkish brown that's sort of in between warm brown and gray, neutral. And I'm going to apply that on a NARS number two brush. And I'm just pushing that into the roots of the lashes, not onto the eyelid. As you can see, that gives us subtle definition, but substantially greater definition. And then just blending over it with a MAC 217, just to diffuse any harshness. I'm going to be going back into our Hendash Butopsy palette and I'm going to be taking the color Intra plus Fatum. But this time I'm only going to press it just at the outer corner. So this Fatum color is more or less a pure black. And then with the same brush, just take it and press it a little bit along after you've applied the product. That way, the remaining product that is on the brush is able to diffuse the edge of what you've applied. So if you press it in a stamp-like motion, you might have a harsh line or a harsh edge. So by just taking the color along and just pressing it just ever so slightly, it just takes the harshness off that edge. And even though we haven't necessarily done quite a lot of makeup to the eyes, you can see by just going in with different layers of depth on the eyes, you then create this really effortless, seamless definition around the eyes. This sort of definition works on most eyes and it will certainly work on all skin tones provided you adjust it to your own skin tone. And then I'm going to be going back in with our Kidstars N33 micro pencil brush. Just quickly smooth over what we have applied. And then going over with a final buff with our MAC 217 from before. I feel like adding a little bit more color to this area. I don't really want to do a sculpted socket or do any elaborate look at all. I just want to add a slight hue to that area in not necessarily a particular shape. I don't want to go for this kind of wing. I want to go for something that's more that kind of wing, something that's more broader and wider, slightly inspired by some of the wings that you see in ancient Egyptian artworks. So I'm going to be going into the Kaleidos Futurism 2 Cyber Bronze palette. 
and I'm going to be taking the powder eyeshadow in the shade Droid, which is this absolutely beautiful, very yellowy, very warm brown colour. I'd almost describe it as being like a tea stain. Now they are quite intense, these Kaleidos colours. I'm not going to really apply it in any particular fashion. I just want to swoop a bit of colour over that area. I don't want to connect it into the socket or into the eye itself. I just want to add this bit of very subtle colour. And I am applying it on an Inglot 6SS brush. And I feel like that's just given me a little bit too much definition. So I'm going to diffuse it with some of the loose powder that I used earlier on a backstage concealer blender brush. So it really is just so subtle. And the way I've been applying it is just by going over like that. I still want to have a little bit of lift, but more in that sort of shape rather than that sort of shape. And by applying eyeshadow in this fashion, it just gives the most seamless definition to that part of the eyes without applying a lot of eyeshadow. And the thing that I like about it the most is that you can't really see where it starts or stops. Your eye isn't necessarily sure of where it begins or ends and you aren't quite sure what it is, but there's still a little bit of a hue there. And this just brings shape to the eyes. It's very enhancing to the eyes, yet so subtle. And it works on every eye type and on every skin tone. Even if your eyes are quite hooded like my own, it gives a little bit of oomph to the eyes. Now I'm going to go in and curl my eyelashes using my QVS eyelash curlers. When it comes to curling eyelashes, curling the eyelashes isn't necessarily the hard part. The hard part is getting all the lashes into the eyelash curler. I curl the eyelashes twice, because I tend to find that once you have curled your eyelashes and you put on your mascara, there's always that one straight hair right at the outer corners of the eye. It's almost like it's horizontal or pointing down. Like it's seen the eyelash curler and thought, <laughs> catch me if you can. And it goes out of its way to dodge the eyelash curler. And it can be really annoying. You'll have lovely eye makeup and lovely lashes and then there's one black straight little hair at the side. So that is why I like to double curl the eyelashes so that the eyelashes are of course very curled, but also because if they're really curled and upright and you have one long black horizontal eyelash right at the outer corners, it will then look as if though it belongs to the lower lashes. Of course, there are different types of eyelash curlers that can really help with this problem and with the problem of straight eyelashes. Eyelash curlers of this style are what I would call bracketed, which basically means you have to fit the eyelash into the curl and then press down. It's not something that you can just take parts of the eyelash and curl with. You do tend to have to curl all of your eyelashes at once with this sort of eyelash curler. Whereas the other styles of eyelash curlers, they are quite like tweezers in the respect that you can get something through them. They work in a similar fashion where a clamp comes down on the eyelash. However, I would not say that they are bracketed like these styles of eyelash curlers that have brackets on either side. Some of the eyelash curlers that I'm referring to that allow you to curl just sections or areas of the eyelashes that you want to curl typically do not have brackets at either side of them. And they tend to be fantastic for curling really straight eyelashes, as well as I found them in the past very, very fantastic at getting that one little annoying hair that is always at the corners of the eyelashes. Now I'm quite convinced that I had some of these eyelash curlers and I would love to show them to you. I knew that Cher Murray used to do a set called the S curlers and I'm sure that there are many other different brands that had them. I have spent the last hour trying to find my S curler eyelashes, but obviously some marauding little imp has broken into my atelier. I don't know how they got through my defenses and stolen my S curler. The clamp style of eyelash curlers really do provide you more control when curling the eyelashes. I have this friend and she has the straightest eyelashes known to man. They're like donkey eyelashes, they go straight down. In fact, it's the running joke between us that she's a donkey. We've known each other for years and years, but we don't get to see each other very often because we both live in different countries. Whenever I do see her, it is very much a case of, hello, long time no see. <laughs> Ever so undignified. Anyway, she's got these really straight, donkey eyelashes. And she was complaining and complaining about eyelash curlers not really working for her. She couldn't get a real curl. She could curl them, but they would never last. I didn't really want to say anything as I didn't really want to seem out of place or overbearing. So I thought I would approach the matter subtly and I said to her, 
get here immediately. I have a solution for you. Of course, me being me, determined to get an MBE for problem solving, I said to her, darling, you must try these, these S curlers by Schirmer. You must try them. It will sort out all your problems. So she tried the S curlers. And what happened was her eyelashes went from being downward to being horizontal. I thought to myself, oh, oh what have I done? These lashes had gone from south to west. So I said to her, Mm, try it again, give it, a, give it a second go. And these eyelashes went from being horizontal straight to having a right angle in them. <laughs> they had a right angle in them. I thought, think fast, think fast, think fast. And I said, give it another go, third time lucky. So these right angled eyelashes, they'd gone from being down to horizontal to having a right angle in them. They then went to having another right angle in them. They were almost like some sort of geometric shape like a Grecian pattern. But we got there in the end, she applied mascara and they looked fantastic. You can get what you want in life, just sometimes not the way that you expected. She says I'm like a horse though because I have these long thin limbs and I'm tall and I have all this black hair, it's like a, a mane. And I do tend to wear a shoe that has a bit of a so she's the donkey and I'm the horse. Stallion, obviously. For mascara, I'm going to be going in with a trusted favorite of mine, the Estee Lauder Double Wear Zero Smudge Lengthening Mascara. Just wobbling the mascara at the root and brushing up and outwards. It never fails to amaze me the wonders mascara does. Now for contour, I'm going to be going back into a Butopsy palette and I should be taking this shade Tan Plus Lines as well as a little bit of wet plus paint and I may go into feel plus real, more the grey side. If tan plus lines is looking a little bit too warm, I'll add a little bit of the feel plus real, a little bit of the grey. And I'm first of all stippling that tan plus lines colour on using an Inglot 3.8 SS brush. By stippling on the contour, you can concentrate the product in certain areas for colour intensity. Because you are stippling it, you are blurring the edges of the contour, which creates a really seamless finish. I also think contours that are gradiated look a lot more realistic. I have completed applying the Tan Plus Lines colour and it has given my skin just the most beautiful, subtle, warm contour. It's a little bit more on the warm side. So I'm going to take some of Feel Plus Real and take some of the grey, just a small amount, and use it to counterbalance the warmth of Tan Plus lines. And as you can see, you only need to do a tiny little bit of that. I think I might have done too much. One little trick if things start to look a little bit strange is to go back over everything with your powder brush from before and somehow it just corrects everything. Before I go in and apply any blusher or highlighter, I'm going to go in and apply a little bit of lipstick just to get it on the mouth for the time being. And for lipstick, I'm going to be taking some of the Lisa Eldridge Luxuriously Lucent Lip Colour in the shade Kitten Mischief. And as you will see, this colour is very close to my own natural lips. It's almost like putting on my own lips as a lipstick, but a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more, a few more reddish, pinkish, slightly cooler tones to it. So I just wanted to get the lipstick on first of all as my lips were feeling very, very dry. For blusher, I'm going to be going back into our Hindash Butopsy palette and I shall be using a combination of the shades Boy Plus Wonder as well as Love Plus Kills. And I'm just taking the faintest amount of both on a Zova 114 brush. And what I'm doing is just moving that across the skin. I'm going to concentrate most of the colour intensity here but by moving the brush across the skin, but focusing the majority of the colour in one area, it really creates a much more seamless gradient. I'm just going back in with our powder brush just to diffuse a little bit. I don't typically go for blusher this bright, but I think with this look it will look really good. With the blush completed, I'm now going to go in and apply highlighter. And to highlight, I'm going to be using the Laura Geller Baked Gelato Swirl Illuminator in the shade Diamond Dust. And I'm applying it on a clean Zova 114 brush. Tiny little bit of it to the brow, a little bit of it at the top of the nose. I love to apply highlighter just at the top of the nose there. To me, it's so fashion. It looks so chic. I love seeing that. So I always like to apply a little bit of highlighter there. And I'm just going to dust a little bit of it through 
the forehead, not going to go through the center of the forehead, just on the sides, just to give the skin that lovely pearlescence. These beautiful purple iridescent sheens, they work so well with really reddish blush, a little bit of it on the chin. Finally, lips. Now I applied that lovely kitten mischief color not all that long ago, but I wanted to leave it on the lips and apply it before applying lip liner because by putting on lipstick before going in with a lip liner, it allows you to really plot the mouth in the face rather than going in with a lip liner first of all and then applying lipstick afterwards. By going in first of all with the lipstick, you do tend to see how the lipstick will overall look how it will work in the rest of the face, and it really allows you to determine what needs to be tweaked. I would do things differently if I didn't have such asymmetric lips, but because they're quite asymmetric, I do tend to find it's better to apply lipstick first to get an idea of the mouth and then go in with lip liner and use it as a corrective. To line my lips, I'm going to be going in with some of MAC Cosmetics lip liner in the shade Boldly Bare and just correcting any of the asymmetry in the lips and just adding a little bit more kitten mischief. So that more or less completes the look. This look wasn't really planned and it isn't necessarily something that I thought a great deal about, but I definitely did try out things and different products that I hadn't necessarily used before. And I have had a lot of fun creating this look for you here today. I hope you have found the tips, the techniques and the recommendations for which that I have made within today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful or beneficial. Once again, thank you so much for watching and of course, take care. Bye.